Zachary, Terry, do you drive? Oh, I don't. I find it difficult to manage a vehicle. I got really nervous when I'm on the road. Me neither. To be honest, I failed in the driving test because of my parking skills. I bet you wish you could have someone to do it for you. Or it could be automated. Oh, yes. What I need to do is just give a shout or just a clap. Then it's done. Then you better pay attention to the next presentation. Development of auto parking system for four-wheel vehicle. Please join us in a big round of applause to welcome students from National Institute of Technology, Kumamoto College, Japan, and Hong Kong Institute of Vocational Education, Vocational Training Council. Good afternoon, my name is Emerson, together with Taylor and Ray. We are from Institute of Vocational Education. Today, it is my pleasure to present our collaborative project working with our Japanese teammate, Ayano and Ono. Hi. They are from National Institute of Technology. Now, let me introduce our project briefly. We aim to develop an auto parking system for four-wheel vehicles. In this project, we have used the two cars. On the left-hand side, we have a vehicle from IFE. On the right-hand side, we have a vehicle from NIT. On these two cars, we have conducted different tests to explore the use of auto parking system. According to a survey by Inrex on parking time, it was found that drivers waste a lot of time on parking. For example, in New York City, a driver wastes over 100 hours per year on parking on average. Can you imagine how long it is? It is more than four days. Not to mention how challenging it is for beginner driver. To address this challenge, we have designed an auto parking system which composed of three modules. First, mass constructions. When the system is activated, the vehicle will scan the environment for a suitable parking space. Second, path panning. After the map is set up, the system will pan the path and convert it into instructions. Then, based on these instructions, we come to the last part, the controller. The vehicle will be driven by the system, which use simultaneous sensor feedback to fine-tune the movement of the car. Before we put the system into our vehicle, we test it in our simulator called Kala in our STEM education center at Qingyi, as shown in the picture. The next picture shows the different sensors we have installed in these two vehicles, such as GPS, LiDAR, ultrasonic, and so on. Now, allow me to introduce Taylor, who will explain how the system works in more detail. Yeah, thank you, Emerson. Let me explain how the Hong Kong team developed the system. First, we scan the environment for a parking space by using a dev camera. Please take a look at the dev map. The color represents the distance from vehicle. Red represents far, blue represents close, and green represents a parking space available. Then a 2D map will be constructed for path planning. With a 2D map, we use the AI reinforcement learning algorithm to instruct the car to move along the desired path for parking. The word reinforcement learning may sound difficult, well, it is like a video game. In this game, AI will try to get a higher score. When AI successfully moves into a target parking space, it will win a point. However, if AI touches any objects or moves over the target parking space, it will lose a point. Finally, AI will replace this action until the controller can perfectly move in the target parking, park parking space. The sensor will use the news network 
to recalculate and control the car. Now let's listen our Japanese teammates who will explain their map construction. Oh no, please. Thank you for the presentation. My name is Otno. First of all, let me explain the map construction. We extract the parking area. We see the stereo camera produced by Stereo Labs. These are the main three steps, and we are using semi global matching algorithm to generate parallax image from stereo camera. And the right figure is the result of extracting the parking area. Next is about path planning. We are using uh, our our purpose is to accomplish an auto car parking in the pattern shown in the figure by controlling the front wheel steering angle. So we are using IDWA, which means improved dynamic window approach and dynamics model or path planning. IDWA is a method to select control commands, velocity and angle velocity based on the owner stability criteria. These are the advantage over the DWA method. And the right figure is the result of IDWA and dynamics model. As you are seeing, the path is planned successfully. But, but if we use only IDWA, it won't reach the goal. After generating path, we are using model, model predictive control which means MPC for controller. It's a modern control algorithm and it determines control input commands by solving optimization problems. So here is a result of MPC. The left, in the left figure, the rate point is waypoint, which is needed to make a reference path. And the reference path is green line, and the blue line is MPC result. And in the right figure is MPC parameter, the result of MPC parameter in the graph. So here is a result, video result of test on electric vehicle. In this video, we only use path, path planning program. So in the future, we try to MPC program and test it on electric vehicle. So next is about application development by Ayana. So Ayana, please. Thank you. My name is Ayana. The purpose of this system is to give instructions for automatic parking using a mobile app. Next is the specifications. This app makes voice operation of a parking system. Voice guidance will be given. Speech recognizer is used for voice recognition. Close finger operation of the parking system. Specify the par parking position and park. Next is the development environment. I use Android Studio for development. The smartphone I use is a Cosen 3. The programming language used is Java. Finally, take the operation. The PC is the server side. The smartphone is client side. Tap server and client. Tap the button on the mobile app to start the voice recognition. Okay. This time, I'll call parking. Performs voice recognition and sends the recognized words to the server. The server will display the recognized words. Currently, only instructions from the client side. In the future, I will improve so that communication from server to client can be also performed. Next is a presentation by students from Hong Kong. Thank you. Thank you, Ayano. The table here summarizes the two different ways adopted by two teams while achieving the same goal. By sharing valuable experience and information, 
The teams from Hong Kong and Japan have successfully worked out an auto parking system for bay parking. In conclusion, this project is a work in progress. When it is successfully developed, it can save time on parking. For further development of the project, we are planning to test our algorithm on a physical car. Meanwhile, the map construction process and obstacle avoiding control can be upgraded by improving scanning for more environmental features. We also hope that we can develop a mobile app to control the auto parking system in the future. That's all for our presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much for the thought-provoking presentation. Now is the Q&A session. Does anyone from the floor have questions for our presenters? Please. Um, thank you for your presentation. I'm Kelvin, a student from VTC in Hong Kong. Uh, as you mentioned, your team uh, uh, is trying to uh, figure out to uh, approach to figure out uh, two different problems. Um, what is the synergy and benefits uh, in terms of learning from your project? Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, well, yes, uh, we use the different auto parking system approaches to solve the bay parking problem. Uh, for example, we plan to adopt our Japanese teammates uh, idea of model predictive control system uh, into our physical car in Hong Kong. Uh, it, can further, uh, it can further help increase uh, uh, the precision uh, of our car. I hope that, uh, uh, Arnold, uh, do you have further something to add? Thanks, Taylor. Thank you for the question as well. Yes, we learned lots of things in this project, especially when I saw when I saw my Hong Kong team using AI for path planning. It inspires me a lot and gives me some idea on my future research, such as we are planning to use AI for controller, not only for path planning. So that's my answer. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Ariano. Uh, I hope that we. we this can answer your question. Thank you. Thank you. There's another question received online. The question is, why did your team decide using AI into this auto parking project? Thank you for your question. And when we were doing research on natural parking situation, and we found that there were many different parking environments, such as the parking space are not standardized, and some are located on the stoop. Therefore, it is very difficult for the path planning. So we thought, why don't we use AI for helping us? Then the result is quite good, and the reinforcement learning of AI is very suitable for the path planning. In the future, we will test it on more different parking environments. I hope can answer your question. Thank you for your answer. Let's give it up again for the thought-provoking presentation. <laughs> Zachary, Terry, don't you think it's getting too hot these days? It seems that there's no more winter in Hong Kong. Tell me about it. Carbon emission and global warming are killing the planet. To help save our planet Earth, we need to reduce energy consumption. So, what should we do? Oh, you can turn off your computer when it's not in use, replace your light bulbs with LEDs. These are good advice. Actually, modern technology can help. Zachary is right. Let's pay attention to our next presentation, Intelligent Energy Management System for Buildings. Let's put our hands together for Students from Coventry University, United Kingdom, and Hong Kong Institute of Vocational Education, Vocational Training Council.
Oh, hello everyone. I'm too too nervous. Yeah. So thank you for coming today. In this presentation, we would like to share our project with you, the intelligent energy manage management system for buildings. So let me introduce myself first. I'm William. And I'm Henry from Hong Kong Institute of Vocational Education. And we also have two members from the UK Coventry University, Mihai and Brate. Hello. Hey there, this is Mihai. Hello, and I'm Bola Day. We're both studying our second year of computer science at Coventry University, and we're honored to be part of such an insightful project. Thank you. As for the Hong Kong team, we have two more members working with us. Marvorek and Ricky. And they are also the year two students of software engineering at Ivy. In this presentation, first we will talk about the project overview. Then we will walk you through the design concepts. After that, we will elaborate the system structure. And at the end, we will have a QA section. In order to provide a cozy environment with low power consumption to reduce the global warming, our system represents the first phase of developing any existing building into a smart building. Firstly, we will show you a brief introduction video of our project background and proposed solutions. Buildings everywhere in our city that we have environmental control system to control buildings environment but there are problems the environment is poor while we go into a room that is closed for a while it is difficult to prepare a suitable building environment based on any scheduling system even the indoor environment is well prepared people may feel that the environment is too cold or too hot within the building and the ultimate problem is energy usage is not effective and destroy our world. Our solution, Intelligence Energy Management System for Buildings. We have a dashboard show up the current environmental status in the building. We can import the scheduled data from other scheduling system in order to control the indoor environment by system intelligent for different scenarios system can automatically tune to the most suitable environment real-time. We can review the energy usage of different area in the building in order to foresee any energy leaking and improve the usage of the energy. Be a smart building, make effective of energy usage. Intelligence energy management system for buildings. Sorry, we have some issue, but never mind. And Henry, you can keep going. In this presentation, we have identified three types of stakeholders. These include at state management staff who can manage the sensors and import the data from the scheduling system. In addition, our system will collect the data from the room user through the installed sensors. Finally, we will implement an intelligent system to maintain the best indoor environment and continuously update the default setting in our system. So, this is our system architecture. There are three parts in our prototype system. Firstly, let's look at the sensor. The environment data is collected by all sensors such as temperature, humidity, and lighting. And secondly, the environment data will be analyzed to find the best solution for the indoor environment. Lastly, at the top, there are some buildings in, in blue. As you can see, the system can automatically control all the devices. For example, it can turn the AC up or down by using the AI. And then our system has a real-time data monitor. So the user can um, monitor all the, in all the data inside the room in real time. Thank you for explaining the system architecture, William. Let me go into more details about the system workflow, which is shown in the diagram here on the left. Firstly, 
our system is able to import the schedule information from the existing scheduling system, like point one and point two. Then, our system will study the use case and prepare a suitable indoor environment for the scheduled time slot. On the right hand side, we will elaborate this flow in point four. During the warm up period, our system will collect the data from the room sensors. With the heat index algorithm, our system will control the appliances and prepare a suitable indoor environment at point five and the environmental conditions will be maintained by real-time data collections from the sensors installed in the room. Let me show you a case study. During the warm-up period, which is few minutes right before the scheduled time slot, our system will retrieve the data, the environment data from the sensors and turn on all the necessary appliances. After the scheduled time slot, our system will automatically turn off all the appliances if no one is in the room. And as, as you can see, there are our hard reality, hard reality texture. And we have four parts in here, namely sensor layer, local processing layer, network transfer layer, and the cloud computing layer. And the sensor layer collects all the indoors data and the Local processing layer will pass the data to the cloud computing layer by the uh, network transfer layer, which is a tiny computer as the Raspberry Pi. And also, the system can retrieve the real-time data. When the sensor is set up in the room, the real-time data will be shown on screen. So we can share more in the future about the sensor operation. Let's take a look at what we currently implement. For that, let's go to the UK side. Hello, brother. Hello. Thank you, William and Henry, for these insights. The intelligence system requires both indoor and outdoor environment data to save energy, aka power usage. As displayed at the top left of the screen, the system has an outdoor temperature, humidity, and weather information. The information retrieving from the Open Weather Map API, it works with the schedule information for preparing indoor conditions. The information is accurate since it uses real-time data for updating the indoor environment conditions. For example, if the system recognizes a cold weather portion from the weather API, it will automatically adjust the indoor temperature accordingly to reach a degree that's comfortable for people. Note that changing the temperature would not happen if there are no people in the building. According to Stedman's indoor environment condition is calculated by a formula based on four attributes, temperature, air pressure, wind speed, and humidity. However, as there's no air pressure and the wind speed input from the current sensors, we simply apply the heat in index as the system algorithm. Please note that the table is a general index. The setting of the indoor environment should be able to fine tune by intelligent system, which will be implemented in the future. Controlling the devices to set up a suitable environment aims an effective energy usage, because in a modern day office environment, sometimes Sometimes the air conditioner may find may tune too cold and there's no control available for people to manually adjust the temperature. As a result, in some cases, people set up an extra heater. This therefore causes double energy usage, one from the air conditioner and other one from the heater. Using our intelligence system, we hopefully can save up to 30% energy compared to traditional buildings, one without the intelligence system. This will help towards our goal of a more sustainable and eco-friendly environment within university buildings and offices. Thank you. Thank you, Bolade. Besides retrieving and storing regional weather data, we're also working on developing a room scheduling and management system, which allows users to create an account, sign in, and book events such as lectures or meetings. Users can easily book events online by selecting their desired options, such as time slot and location, event name and type, its duration, preferred usage plan or custom settings, and more. The main system will have access to the bookings, preloading the schedule list ahead of time, and adjusting the indoor environment accordingly during the set time slot of each booking. Microsoft Dynamics is an example of an existing scheduling management application, and in the future, we are going to import the external data from such an application into our system. 
For the time being, however, we're going to simulate a scheduling system in order to work on the booking management feature as shown on screen. Depending on the room settings of a booking, some devices will be automatically turned on before the start of the event, as to ensure people are comfortable when entering the room. For example, if the room is currently cold, but the usage plan is set to a warmer temperature, the system will calculate the most efficient way to heat up the room before the event starts, by turning the heaters on at the appropriate level and double-checking that no air conditioners are turned on at the moment. Moreover, if the outdoor temperature is significantly colder, all windows will be closed during the heating process. This also includes turning on and off the lights and projectors, so that the staff don't have to do it manually every time. In addition, by using the light sensors to check the room's ambient light, we can check for device failure, such as burnt-out light bulbs, which can give time to the staff to fix the problem before the starting time of the event, while also notifying the user of the potential issue and its current status. The users will, have, will be in control of their bookings, being able to edit a plan or cancel the event, while also having real-time access to room status, such as temperature, humidity, lighting level, and more, and being notified if any issue arises. Lastly, this subsystem will come with an API that can provide the scheduled data in JSON format to be used by the device control system when adjusting the environmental settings of a location, as well as display the booking details and status to users inside the main application. Thank you. Thank you, Bula. Thank you, Bula Behai. Our system provides a dashboard for the real-time data monitoring, including power usage, sensor status, and we have a function to retrieve the data reports. In addition, we can manually maintain the sensors and control the indoor environment. This setting will be recorded to use to and used to enhance the system in the future. This is our first prototype, which will be installed indoor in different locations. Since the system works in our module, I hope that it can be applied to any buildings as a smart buildings with its low cost and fixable conditions. So, if you would like to learn more about our project, you are welcome to explore our project website. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing your insightful ideas with us. Let's move on to the Q&A session. Let's see what questions our audience have for our presenters. Please. Um, I'm Lam Chi Kin, VTC student from Hong Kong. I want to ask, how can you control the air conditioner with our Raspberry Pi? Does it involve any control module? Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the question. Mm, that's a good question. And nowadays in the market, have a lot of uh, smart, smart home plug-in control, um, such as uh, a brand namely uh, Sensible uh, Smart AC Control, and then which is uh, programmable and it is uh, have the API. Yeah. And so we can use it on our Raspberry Pi and then we program it and then we output the signal to the smart control and then we can control the AC. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your answer. I have another question received online. I'm wondering the internet communication is safe enough if the system is easily hacked by a hacker. Oh, that's a good question. I think Mihai can answer this question. Sure thing. Uh, in the current network prototype, all sensor data can be encrypted by RSA and 128-bit data encryption in a real case. And for the case applied into large-scale buildings, the wireless connection will be encrypted and will be managed by blockchain technology. So it shouldn't be a problem. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's put our hands together again for the wonderful presentation. Zachary, are you not feeling well? Nothing serious. I ate too much during lunch and now I'm having some indigestion. You should take good care of your digestive system. Don't overeat and take food that is rich in probiotics, such as yogurt. I've heard that probiotics are good for your digestive system. Speaking of probiotics, let's hear our last presentation. The role of probiotic bacteria and its application in healthy product development. Let's give a big round of applause to welcome students from Manchester Metropolitan University, 
United Kingdom and Technological and Higher Education Institute of Hong Kong Vocational Training Council. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Wing. Here is Marco. We are from DI in Hong Kong. We welcome Hannah and Lorenzo from MMU in UK. Hello. We are going to discuss the topic, the role of probiotic bacteria and its application in healthy product development. According to the news, the Center for Food Safety in Hong Kong has conducted a research about ecolamide in food and found that over 99% of biscuits and snacks contained acrylamide, which is a chemical classified as Group 2A, probably carcinogenic to human, by the International Agency for Research on Cancer in 1994. The discovery of acrylamide in food has raised the public health concerns, and different centers have started to investigate methods to reduce acrylamide. Recently, the use of probiotics has been proven to reduce acrylamide during the food production process. In this joint project, micro-research has been conducted both in Hong Kong and the UK aimed to investigate the use of probiotics in food products. Our purpose is to examine the acrylamide reducing abilities of selected probiotics by LCMS liquid chromatography mass spectroscopy, and to explore the potential new applications for probiotics by developing new food products. Market research was conducted in Hong Kong and the UK with the following methods. Data analysis was conducted, and finally, the data is presented. The results show that 63% of probiotic food products found in Hong Kong a yogurt and yogurt drinks. With a total of 86 types of probiotic products, most originated from France, the USA, and South Korea. From figure three, it is shown that the most common type of probiotic bacteria found in food are Lactobacillus bulgaricus and Streptococcus thermophilus. 18% of the products did not specify the type of probiotic bacteria but it stated it contained probiotics. From the research found on the Euromonitor International, some food companies started to produce, to expand their production line by producing some new products, such as yogurt beverages. One company introduced another brand, which adds milk into the original recipe of Yakut. Another food company has introduced has repositioned itself and emphasized that their products contain no preservatives but active lactobacillus. Furthermore, a local startup business has developed probiotic food products for mm. infants. Based on our finding, Hong Kong is still a potential market for probiotic food products. Let me pass to the UK side to discuss a similar research. Hannah, please. As previously mentioned by Wing, the UK used the same methodology to conduct our market research as Hong Kong. This first chart depicts how the UK market is dominated by probiotics in dairy-based products, about 94% of the total usage, and how among these, yogurt-based drinks are the most common. In the second chart, we analyse the country of origin of these products, and in the UK, we are the main producer of such products. In terms of the particular strains used, we found a vast array of different choices, some in combination with others. The main bacteria found was Lactobacillus cassi, commonly present in many dairy foods. However, it must be noted that many products did not specifically state which strains were in their products and simply used the term live cultures. As you can see here, the market for probiotic functional foods is growing exponentially, with new products being launched constantly. In 2018, we saw the launch of a new range of crunch bars from Planet Organic. The bars are vegan and gluten-free, meeting even more current popular consumer demands, and host an impressive 1 billion colony-forming units per bar. In 2019, Nancy's Probiotic Foods introduced a new line of organic whole milk yogurts, 
available in four flavours. The cows are raised on family farms and the yogurts boast over 30 billion live bacteria in every serving. Also so far this year, the company Biotiful Dairy has launched kefir cheese in three flavours. They have over 40 different strains of billions of bacteria per pot. As you can see here, yogurt drinks were the most popular vessel for probiotic bacteria in both the UK and Hong Kong. However, the origin of these products differs greatly, with the variety of the source of products being much more varied in Hong Kong. The countries also differed on the predominant strains of bacteria in the products. However, both found a large variety. Finally, Hong Kong appears to be more progressive in the non-dairy probiotic market, as nearly a quarter of their products were snack-based, whereas very few were found on the shelves here in the UK. I will now pass back over to Marco in Hong Kong. Thank you, Hannah. I'm Marco from DI in Hong Kong. Before exploring the experiment to evaluate a climate reduction ability by probiotics, I would first like to introduce some background information to you guys. Acrylamide is a chemical substance that may cause cancer. Usually, it will undergo polymerization to form polyacrylamide, and it has a lot of use in different industries. And polyacrylamide is widely used in wastewater treatment, drinking water treatment, and paper processing. And for, for the formation of acrylamide, formation of acrylamide, acrylamide will form during made up reaction. Baking, roasting, and frying are common food process that involve made-up reaction. And it's not likely to find lots of acrylamide in food product because it is toxic and even cause cancer to human. It, is, it has neurotoxic effect and is classified as a group 2A carcinogen to human. And studies have found that probiotic bacteria can improve gastrointestinal health, proper immune function, and even reduce alpha toxin. And recent study found that probiotic can reduce acrylamide by physically binding with acrylamide through the cell wall of bacteria to reduce it. And the main binding sites are the peptidoglycan and polysaccharide. Lactobacillus acidophilus LA, Lactobacillus cassis-serota LC, and bifidobacterium longum BL are the common probiotics found in probiotic product and will be used for the experiment. And for the methodology of our experiment, first we prepare the acrylamide standard solution and the probiotics. Then we add the probiotics in the acrylamide standard solution thoroughly. By checking the amounts of acrylamide by LCMS, we can calculate the acrylamide reduction percentage from the results. And for the results showing the effect of selected probiotics on acrylamide, according to Table 1, LA has the highest acrylamide reduction ability, which can reduce around 32 to 35% of acrylamide in the test concentration among free probiotics. And because of the high acrylamide reduction ability of LA, it is selected to in our new food reformulation, and hopefully, it can reduce acrylamide content in the food. Then, I will pass it to Lorenzo. Lorenzo, please. Thank you. So based on these findings, the acidophilus was chosen to be used in a new product reformulation. We decided to use just one type of strain as it's easier to prepare, incorporate, and control its viability throughout the manufacturing processes. The wafer biscuits were chosen to be reformulated as they are common in both markets and are high in acrylamide. And uh, two novel approaches were designed to effectively incorporate the bacteria, one during the pre-baking and one during the post-baking. Uh, the first approach consists of incorporating the strain directly into the raw biscuit dough as part of the dry ingredients, so as a powder to be mixed with the flour. At this stage, the L asparaginase a uh, enzyme contained in the bacteria will catalyze the reaction to convert asparagine, a precursor of acrylamide, into aspartate and ammonium. Uh, these products are unable to produce acrylamide, and therefore during the baking, less acrylamide will be produced. The dough will then undergo several other processes. These include two uh, cooling steps, the incorporation of a creaming, and the cutting in the right shape and size. Uh, the second approach will still use a peculiar characteristic of this bacteria, 
but instead of limiting the acrylamide formation, it will mitigate its absorption. Uh, the bacteria indeed is mainly made by complex carbohydrates and alanine. Uh, these macromolecules can bind with the acrylamide molecules and create a sort of shell around them to prevent the absorption in the gastrointestinal tract. After the baking, uh, the bacteria will be incorporated using an edible coat or film made of starch. And this can act as a vessel for the bacteria. And it's a great medium as it's odorless, tasteless, and transparent. And it's already been used for a similar application. Uh, the gel then will be applied uh, at two different stages. So uh, during the creaming, as part of the creamy filling between two layers, or just before the cutting, so it can just spray it on, be sprayed on uh, the biscuit surface. Uh, in conclusion, at the present moment, the majority of probiotic products can be found in uh, dairy-based food in both markets, and the uh, most common bacteria is the Lactobacillus casei. The Lactobacillus acidophilus instead showed uh, the greatest stability in reducing acrylamide, and the Waffle biscuits were the product chosen to be reformulated as they are uh, high, as I said, in acrylamide, and they're very common uh, both in UK and Hong Kong. In order to do so, uh, two novel approaches uh, were suggested to effectively incorporate the strain. Uh, so one uh, into um, the pre-baking steps, and the second um, in the post-baking steps using a inedible coating. Um, I'd like to thank you all for listening to uh, our presentation, and I hope you enjoyed. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your innovative ideas with us. I'm sure you have some questions for our presenters. Please. Thank you for your presentation. I'm Yo Yo, VTC student in, from Hong Kong. The one more thing is I would like to ask the question is other than dairy products, do you think new? new food product with biotics will be valuable in the market? Thank you. Thank you for your questions. And uh, due to the equilibrium reducing properties of the probiotics, I think the products with the probiotics will be valuable in the market since they are healthy and it is also suitable for uh, people who have gastrointestinal problem and also who are not able to eat dairy products. Thank you. Thank you. This is a question we get online. The question is, why do you think probiotic snacks are more popular in Hong Kong than the UK? Thank you for your question. I think it is because the market has not reached the UK yet, as mentioned in the PowerPoint. I think in general, the amount of probiotics found in the supermarkets was larger in Hong Kong than here in the UK. There is clearly more potential for experimentation over there. I believe with time, probiotic snacks will become more popular over here, and they are already starting to do so, by the, shown by the development of the Crunch Bars in 2018. I hope that answers your question. Thank you very much for your answer. Let's give the team a big hand for their inspiring presentation.